Hi, I'm Frederick, and together with another four of my group members, we were requested to shoot a video based on any of the construction process. After some discussion, we have decided to shoot a video about the construction of rough foundation. The construction site that we have chosen is located in Makota Hill, Banda Academia, Lenging. This project is carried out by a company named Chempaka Johan Sendiran Berhad. We were guided by the owner, Mr. Lai Quing Kong, and the engineer, Mr. Alex Chow. They have enlightened us about the construction of Farah Foundation in details as most of us are still new in the field. Intro to Rough Foundation Rough Foundation, also known as Mat Foundation, are a large concrete slab which can support a number of columns and walls. The slab is spread out under the entire building or at least a large part of it which lowers the contact pressure compared to the traditionally used drip or trench footing. And because the speed and volume of houses required after the Second World War, the rough foundation was widely used. The rough foundation was relatively cheaper and easier to install and most importantly, it required less excavation compared to strip and trench foundation. When the building regulations were introduced in 1965, there were no generic rules for the rough foundation as there were for strip foundations. And this meaning that to use a rough foundation, it has to be designed and approved by building control. This made the entire operation much more difficult and time consuming, so rough foundation become less widely used almost overnight. When are rough foundation used? Roughs are most often used these days when strata is unstable or a normal strip foundation will cover more than 50% of the ground area beneath the buildings. There are also situations usually in areas where mining has occurred where there may be an area of movement in the strata. Rough foundations are commonly used in construction of commercial buildings and domestic houses. And in order to fully utilize rough foundation in construction, you need to understand how they work and construct it. Constructing process There are six main steps to be done in order to construct a rough foundation which are excavation of the topsoil, lean concrete layering, placing and tying of reinforcement bar in both ways, constructing the formwork around the four edges, placing and compacting of concrete, and lastly, determining the thickness of rough foundation by using a wooden pad. Excavation of the topsoil The worker is excavating the soil by using a truck back hole. They had planned their excavation before they started the excavation process. The surveyor set out corner benchmarks and survey for ground level and top levels. They will mark out the excavation area by using grey tapes. Thus, labour will excavate according to the marked out lines. Excavation should be done to a certain approved depth. By using a hole tool, the worker loosens the surface of the soil. After that, another worker would use a mini compactor to compact the soil. And a truck is arrived to execute the following step, which is hardcore pouring. And the labor will spread out a hardcore evenly while the other labor compacted with the mini compactor. Lean concrete layering. A layer of lean concrete will be poured right after the first process. Lean concrete is made with low cementation material content, which means that it does not have a lot of heavy and high density rock and sand material that can be found in normal concrete. Instead, it can use a mixture of standard concrete material, reclaimed and crushed concrete, discard sand and also recycled ashes. This makes lean concrete very cheap in nature and simple to make and use. Placing and tying of reinforcement bar in both ways. The engineer and architect will usually do the technical design work and provide specific information regarding the size, configuration, and the placement of rebar in associated concrete work. Planning the actual fabrication and placement as well as the schedule of the work. There were few kinds of rebars needed, such as stirrup, 
door wells and corner bars. For this specific construction work, the authorities decided to use rebar as the spacing instead of using concrete cover or leftover timber cover. Tying the bars in both ways so that they remain in their correct respective position is critical to achieve the desired strength of the completed concrete structure. Furthermore, pliers were used to tie these ties efficiently. As you can see, there is a layer of DPM below the rebars. As we know, a damp-proof membrane DPM, is a membrane material applied to prevent moisture transmission. A common example is polyethylene sheeting laid under a concrete slab to prevent the concrete from gaining moisture through capillary action. A DPM may be used for DPC. Constructing formwork around the four edges. For foundation such as rough foundation where the sides are not supported by the earth, firm work are used. If the rough has an edge beam, then the edge of the beam will be supported to prevent any earth filling into the trench or slab. Timber or wood are the common materials for firm work construction, and most of the firm work could be reused. This is an economical way to save costs and also practicing the concept of reusing at the same time. Placing and compacting of concrete Two trucks were arrived and standby for the concrete pouring. Concrete is mixed by adding together Portland cement, sand and coarse aggregate together in a ratio of 1 is 2 is to 4. Water is added to the dry mixture to bind all the components together. Pouring the liquid material into forms at the building site. This is so called in situ concrete. Spreading the concrete is undertaken concurrently with placing or without delay. In situ concrete is often spread using a paving machine or a spreader box and operated with a mechanism with levels of the cement bound material to an even depth. Concrete in situ is always spread in one layer. Then the vibrator will be used in order to transform them into vibrator concrete, which means concrete which has been subjected to some form of vibration in order to compact it. Vibrating float, which is a vibrating device, is used to finish in situ concrete. Last but not least, smoothening the surface is important as well. And the last step will be the determination of the thickness of rough foundation by using a wooden pack. After the visit, we had a short interview with Mr. Lai so that he can further enlighten us about the construction. Yeah. 
两百间，它也是十二个月到一年的款费的，两间也是一年的款费的，啊，三百间，通常他们，他如果那个有那个要你一年的时间，这个是我发展商的意思，意意思啊。啊，就是你们 Q A 做出来的 B Q 哦，你们 Q A 做出来的 B Q， 你们我们我们点的点的点的那时候是我们 Q A 做出来，还有那个我们在里面有写嘛。如果这个 project， 他讲是十二个月的，十二个月一定要交货。要不然呢，在下面还有一个条文，就是讲 L A B 一天啊，要要多花多少钱哦？啊，如果你他肯定了，每一个框框里面肯定有很多条文的，有些有些嘛，等下我们来去抓那个那个那个 L A B 的，多利多。一天多少钱？我试过一天八千块。那你那看看那个，通常了，现在我们假设我们的，刚才我们去看我们的那个赛的啦，那些他的。那个是拉不进，比较薄啦，不会很厚的。我们呢就是不会超过十块钱的。十块钱一个，嗯，大概整个，大概整个，整个就要看你的面积咯。嗯，还是你的一千方尺一样，一千方尺就是十千，十千左右，十千左右。Simple brief about rough foundation. Typically, rough foundation are formed by reinforced concrete slab to cover a wide area, often the entire footing of a building. They spread the load imposed by a number of columns or walls over a large area, and can be considered to float on ground as rough floats on water. They are suitable where ground conditions are poor and strip or pad foundation. Will require significant excavation. For example, on soft clay, alluvial deposit, compressible fill, and so on. Besides, they are also suitable for settlement or differential settlement, where it may be impractical to create individual strip or pad foundation for a large number of individual loads. In general terms, a strip or pad foundation would cover 50% or more of the floor area than a rough may be appropriate. Rough foundation can be fast and expensive to construct, as they tend not to require deep excavation compared to strip or pad foundation, and they may use less material as they combine the foundation with the ground slab. However, they tend to be less effective where structural loads are focused in a few concentrated areas. They tend to include steel reinforced to prevent cracking. And may incorporate beams or thickened area to provide additional support for specific loads. For example, below the internal walls. Typically, a thickened reinforced area is created at the perimeter of the rough to form an edge beam, supporting the external wall of buildings. A concrete toe often supports the external lift of the wall. Advantages and disadvantages of the rough foundation. Rough foundation tend to be cheaper and quicker to use than traditional footing. There are a few reasons that why this is the case. The foundation and floor slab is combined, which saves the time and materials. Furthermore, less excavation is required. Other reasons that make rough foundation preferable to footing are due to their engineering benefits. 
They are ideal for poor ground condition where normal footing will not cope well as they cannot spread the load as effectively. Related to this is that rough foundation can reduce differential settlement, where settlement occurs at different rate across the ground surface of the building, which reduces cracking and other more serious problems. The main disadvantage is that they can prone to edge erosion if they are not treated properly. They are not as effective if the load of the building is going to be focused on a single point, although this is rare in domestic construction, so this isn't generally of concern. Example of buildings As we know, rough foundations are unable to support high-rise building and is not suitable for soil with low bearing capacity. Skyscraper could not be solely supported by rough foundation, hence they combine both rough foundation and piling in order to give enough support for the buildings. The tallest building, Burj Khalifa in Dubai, are one of those using this kind of combined foundation. For this combined foundation, the rough foundation is built on top of the pile foundation. Precisely, the foundation system for Burj Khalifa is comprised of 192 board pile, 1.5 meter in, in diameter and approximately 50 meter deep. A 3.7 meter thick rough foundation sits on top of the piles, under the full footprint of the structure. Another clear instance of those famous buildings which uses the design of rough foundation is the Auditorium Theatre in Chicago. One of the most innovative features of the buildings was its massive rough foundation, designed by Adler in conjunction with engineer Paul Mueller. Adler and Mueller designed a floating mat of crisscross railroad tiers. This was topped with a double layer of, of steel rod, embedded in concrete and coated with pitch. The resulting rough distributed the weight of the massive outer walls over large areas. Outline of apparatus Immersion or needle vibrators This is perhaps the most commonly used vibrator. The period of vibration required 30 seconds to 2 minutes. The concrete should be placed in layers not more than 600 mm high. Concrete mixing truck Concrete mixing trucks are made to transport and mix concrete to the construction site. They can be charged with dry material and water, with the mixing occurring during transport. They can also be loaded from a central mix plant. With this process, the material has already been mixed prior to loading. Trowel Troweling is performed to create a smooth, hard and uniform finishes across the concrete surface. Troweling can take place by having contractors skate across the surface on kneeboard troweling small areas at a time, or with larger trowels on poles known as fresno or funny trowels. As a conclusion, rough foundations are mostly suitable for a single-storey extension to domestic buildings.